Hi, Bev again, and today the video is going to be on omega fatty acids, and there are three, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. So you need all three in proper balance, um, otherwise you're going to get health issues. Um, but the chemistry, just quickly, in case you're wondering where the numbers come from, um, omega fats have double bonds. So omega-3 has the first bond at the third carbon atom. This one has it at the sixth carbon, carbon atom, and this one at the ninth, okay? Just technical information, chemistry. Um, but basically, dietary fats like these omega-6, uh, 3, and um, 9, if you have proper balance, they aren't going to make you fat. Dietary fat doesn't make you fat. Eating a lot of, uh, you know, processed carbs does make you fat. So back to these. The first two, omega-3 and omega-6, are essential fatty acids, and that means that your body cannot make it. Just like there are essential uh, nine essential amino acids that your body can't make, um, omega-9 is made by your body, so you don't have to really worry about eating that, not that it's bad to eat it. But let's talk about, um, first of all, omega-3. And you're gonna see a number of positive attributes of omega-3, okay? Uh, Anti-inflammatory, um, repairs cell membranes, reduces triglycerides, these are fats, and increases good cholesterol. So lots of good things about this. And there are examples of what you can eat to increase your omega-3, okay? Now, omega-6, sorry, omega-9 on the other side, made by your body, a lot of positive aspects as well. Um, reduces your blood pressure, uh, helps you burn fat, uh, reduces uh, free radicals. You know those are nasty guys. I should do a video on that. Uh, decreases bad cholesterol. So these are both good. And I don't want to suggest, and these are examples by the way of uh, omega-9. Um, I will mention that olive oil does have three and six, but it's not very much, it's mostly nine, and there are some other examples here. Now, omega-6 is interesting. Yes, it's good for you. It regulates your genes, it promotes immunity, it allows for blood clotting, it has a lot of good attributes as well. But I'm only going to list negative things on the board. Why? Because unfortunately, in the North American diet, and uh, actually more so now in the rest of the world, um, there is a very large amount of omega-6 intake in our diets. And so that throws the balance off that I was talking at the beginning. And omega-6, I want to talk about the negative things about having too high omega-6 in your body. Okay, it promotes insulin resistance. It's pro-inflammatory, and anytime you have any kind of... Uh, issue in your body, you're going to have, you're going to be inflamed. It promotes acidity, and that means more toxic waste. And when you have more toxic waste in your body, your body has to get rid of it. It'll use its usual mechanisms, but if it can't get rid of it all, it's going to store it because it doesn't want it in your healthy cells. And guess where it stores it? In fat cells. And if you don't have enough fat cells, it's just going to make more, okay? So this is not good. And there are a lot of reasons that you can increase your uh, omega-6 sugar, a lot of corn, processed foods or processed meats, peanut butter, cereal grains, deep fried foods. And you know, you go to the fast food, they like to call them crispy now because that sounds better, right? But all of that increases your omega-6. Um, what I want to talk about in let me just talk about vegetable oils. And vegetable oils are always very highly refined uh, and highly pro processed, which means the nutrient content, content has been diminished greatly, actually. So, you know, you, we do buy oils, right? We know that they're processed, but we do buy them. So I decided to write down for you, and I wrote it down so you're not looking at my back all the time. Here are typical oils that you might buy, okay? And what I've compared here is the name of the oil, the percentage of the oil that is omega-3, 
and the percentage of the oil that is this nasty omega-6 in terms of percentage-wise, right? So flaxseed is the best. 57% omega-3, 14% 6. So as you go down, these that people tend to buy, sunflower and safflower, I don't know if you can see on this. Maybe I'll lift this up a little bit. If you look at sunflower and safflower, you're going to see extremely high omega-6 and no omega-3. And then have a look at sesame oil or look at soybean oil really high in 6. Peanut oil has no 3, but you know, you do use peanut oil if, um, you know, if you're deep frying something, which you shouldn't be doing, but if you do deep fry, it has a higher smoke point, right? So I just point this out um, because as soon as you throw this, this balance off, you're going to have issues. And this is generally how the food industry causes this imbalance with a lot of omega-6s. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, that you learned the difference. Okay, see you next time.